guys, what's up? It's Fern. I hope that you are all well. Thank you so much for tuning in to another planty video. Today we are doing another plant chores video. So I am basically going to be making a list of a few planty things I've been wanting to get done and then we are going to do it together. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Okay guys, so this is where we're gonna start. I've just got a few things on here. Um, I've really been wanting to add my small Hoya Compacta to the pot of my bigger one, so I think I'm gonna do that. Also my Hoya Sigillatus, which is like one leaf that was an import. I've showed it before, but it's actually putting out new growth, which is crazy, but it's coming out the side of its um, orchid pot, which is not good, I'll, sh I'll show you, but I need to switch that to a new pot. I want to chop up my philodendron in Brazil because I want to propagate it and then put it on a moss pole. And then I have some watering to do. This is just where we're going to start. Maybe I'll um, come across more things that I need to do as we're going. But I think this, it doesn't look like much, but I feel like this is going to, um, you know, be a, a full video already. And I also wanted to mention that I have this uh, post-it, which I was copying some things off of because I actually keep this on my fridge. And then when I'm, you know, going about my day or doing some watering and I remember something that I want to do, I just write it on this post-it. So then when I go to do a bunch of plant chores, then I already know some things that I've been meaning to do. So I'm just going to put this back on my fridge. But yeah, that's the situation. So let's get started with these. Okay, guys. So these are the Hoya Compacta in question. This is a small one. This is actually a propagation that I took from this one. And... I've just grown it out a little bit so yeah now I just want one bigger plant again so I'm going to be potting them together I also have this I also have this cute little ID tag that I'll be putting on that pot as well so I guess I don't know why I'm doing this on my kitchen counter I just didn't feel like moving my table to the living room and everything I actually recently ordered a like collapsible table which will make it really easy for me to just set up wherever I want to film to do repottings and stuff which will be so nice because right now when I do repottings um, at the table like in front of the greenhouse cabinets I have to literally like rearrange my living room so um, it's gonna be so much easier for me to film I think it comes at the end of next week so really excited for that new table but anyways yes we're going to be doing this repotting just on my counter for now okay so I'm first just gonna take this guy out I guess I think he's pretty dry let's see oh I can see roots there too oh my goodness I know Hoy don't like to be repotted a lot so yeah I'm just doing it anyways though Oh my gosh, I feel like it has a lot more roots than I thought it was going to. I'm just kind of loosening up the soil so that I can hopefully get it out without damaging. Oh my goodness, yeah, you can see there's so many roots in there. It's crazy. Oh my goodness, they're like sticking to the terracotta. Okay, there we go. Wow, look at these roots. I don't know why I didn't expect it to have this much roots. I thought I could maybe just like pop it in here and add some more soil because it's not like super full. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. I don't know if it's gonna fit in there. Let's take this off. You can tell that I originally potted this up quite a while ago because there's a piece of t-shirt fabric in the bottom and this is what I used to do over my drainage holes but then I noticed that they were creating mold so I stopped doing that. 
and I moved to using the mesh from produce and whatnot, but you guys know I've had my struggles using that as well. So I'm just lightly breaking the root ball up. Yeah, I do not know how I'm gonna get this in this pot now. There's way more roots than I thought. Like, that's not gonna fit there. <laughs> oh boy, maybe I can dig a little hole. Okay, well that's pretty good. Oh, this is so satisfying. I kind of want to rinse, rinse this off and then take a photo of it. Oh my gosh, you guys, the sun is coming out a little. That makes me so happy. Let's back this up. Mm, okay. Actually, it's too far. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna try to remove some of the soil. See if I can just like dig it a little hole without disturbing the big one too much. potting like this before we're just making it work guys nothing nothing is too has to be too serious you know okay let's see if i can like somehow the leaf here that i want to move Should I just repot the whole thing into a bigger pot? Maybe? Like this would work. It would work. Maybe I should just do it. Need to move this leaf though. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fill it up with some more potting mix. My potting mix is just behind the camera, but it's my regular potting mix that I use. I recently posted an Instagram reel and TikTok about it. Um, if you wanna go check that out for more info. I hope this is going to be okay. I'm sure the roots will just grow down more, right? When I checked the weather yesterday, you guys, it said that there was going to be some sun today and there hasn't been until now and it's already 1.30 p.m. and it's finally come out. So I'm so happy that it actually is coming out for a little bit of the day. Oh my goodness, you do not know how much the sunshine means to me. 
that makes my day a little bit brighter. Okay, so let's look at our Hoya Compacta here. This is the finished result. Um, I think that it's gonna be just fine. I'm just gonna kind of baby this vine until it kind of gets itself rooted in there. But I love this. I love that it looks like a fuller pot now. This is one of my all time favorite plants. And my dream is to have a long hanging basket. So, you know, we're on our way there. We have four vines in here now. Is there another one in the back? I don't think so. Yeah, we have four vines here. So that is awesome. I'm so excited about that. I thought I would also give an update and show my variegated compacta. This is how it's doing. There's actually a dead leaf in there. It is an all white leaf. I've had a lot of people ask me why I chopped off the all white growth on this plant and that is why. <laughs> the white leaves typically will die off but the rest are doing really well. Um, since I chopped off that white in August, it's put out these leaves with green. And then that like one that's still kind of pinky um, is actually new growth that's just come out about a month ago. This plant is the slowest grower in the world. Um, it's a tie between this and my Thai constellation for how slow <laughs> for the for the slowest plant award, I guess. Um, yeah, I've had this thing for actually, you know, what's funny. I bought this plant at the same time as the Thai constellation and they were both my first like rare house plants. And that was a year and a half ago, almost exactly a year and a half ago. And they're both still like tiny. So it's funny that I chose like two super slow growing plants, but he lives in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet and I'm hoping he will continue to do well in there. So let's put him back. I really like this plant. Like, yes, it's very slow growing, but um, I don't want to get rid of it or anything like that. So I just keep it and get really excited when it grows. So yeah. Okay, so next thing on the list is Hoya sigillatus. So this is a very small Hoya sigillatus um, that was an import and it lost pretty much all of its leaves except for this one. So it's been in sphagnum moss for a few months now and I just noticed the other day that it is putting out a new, oh, this is weird, I'm lighting here. Appreciate the sun, but <laughs> the shadows aren't working with me. Uh, okay, let's see if you'll be able to see. Right there, it has started putting out a new vine and leaf, but it's going out the, this little slot in the pot, so that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to get that out and hopefully not damage it. I think I'm gonna like put a fork to widen the gap. Let me see if this works. Oh, it's just small. I don't wanna, yeah, okay. So I've kind of like, Try to open with the fork. Okay. Now, okay, what's my plan here? Now, let's see. Oh, oh my gosh, there it goes. Oh, shite. Oh, uh oh. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, oh shoot, it's like, okay. Okay, oh my gosh, it's okay, you guys, it's okay. We did it, okay. That was almost as um, suspenseful as when I was repotting my bro's tail. Did anybody watch that video? Because that was stressful. Okay, so. Heard a noise. Okay, so I wanted to see what we have going on for roots here. So I'm just gonna take it out of this pot and pull some of the moss away.
Okay, so there is some roots. This, there's like a vine that goes down and then there's some roots down here. I don't need to take like all this moss off. I was just curious. Oh yeah, I can see some roots. So I'm going to put this in, let me think about what I wanna put this in actually. Okay, so I found this little plastic thing without slots that it does have a drainage hole, but it doesn't have any slots. So I'm gonna put it into this one for now. I still want to keep it in something clear just because I like to see the roots, but yeah, this will be better. Really glad that it's growing. I thought maybe I would lose this plant. There we go. This is a lot, oh, focus. This is a lot better because this new growth is free to grow out the top now. So yeah, that's what it looks like. My little single leaf sigillatus. Okay guys, so we are switching gears from the repotting a little bit and we are going to be chopping now. So, this is my beautiful philodendron Brazil and I love this plant because she has some of the most beautiful leaves I have seen on a philodendron Brazil. They're so big and beautiful and what I want to do with her is take a bunch of propagations, root them, and then pot them up, but have her grow up a moss pole, just because I wanna see if these leaves can stay this big and beautiful. If you have a philodendron Brazil, they are very prone to um, putting out small leaves when they're left to trail. So I really want this one to climb. And yeah, so the first step to doing that is uh, chopping and propping. So that is what we are going to be doing. So maybe I'll start off by just taking off a couple of vines. Oh my gosh, she's so pretty. Oh, I love her. I'm actually planning on doing the same thing with my philodendron silver stripe because that plant puts out pretty small leaves and I want to see what it looks like when it's climbing. Oh my goodness. Just getting stuck. There we go. Another one. And let's maybe do one more vine. So, oh, this one has some really big, pretty leaves. Let's do this one. What's that leaf? Stay. Okay, this is the last vine I'm gonna cut off. And then I am actually gonna turn these all into single leaf cuttings. Okay, so basically I am just gonna be cutting between all of the nodes. So if you're new to propagation, um, basically where each leaf is, there is nodes. Um, you can see either like a bump or where the aerial roots are, that's what's gonna root up. So we just need to basically cut out the space in between each of those. And I'm not gonna keep this top one, that's just... So, for example, there is one 
Um, so that's about how much of the stem I keep on. Basically like, I don't know, almost an inch on either side. It's good to keep some of the stem just because it keeps you a little safer in case you get rot. I mean, I'm not really concerned because this is, you know, a pretty basic plant and um, I'm taking so many. I'm gonna have so many leaf cuttings. If some of them don't make it, you know, I'm not gonna be upset, but this is basically what I'm going for, for all of them. Okay, so this is all of the leaf propagations that I got from that. There's a whole bunch right here. So what I'm actually gonna do is just let them callus over for maybe an hour. I'm just gonna leave them to sit out just so they're not like all slimy and wet at the cuts still because that makes them more prone to rot. So it's kind of an extra step. I never used to do this, but I mean, I might as well. Anything that's gonna help a little bit. And then I also wanted to mention that there is this little piece that is basically a leafless node. Um, and I have been really into like experimenting with wet stick propagations lately and getting them to root and grow. So I'm just gonna throw this into one of my sphagnum moss prop boxes. I have one, if you've seen my first propagation series episode that I just put out, I think last week. Um, I show my propagation boxes in that and one of them which is like my crappy <laughs> propagation box is basically just all like these wet stick type of things so I'm just gonna throw this into that one and we'll see if it does anything look at Ollie bear oh sweetheart resting Okay, it's going to be going into here. And I'm literally just going to like put it put it in some moss here. Wedge it in. Boom. And then I'm sure you'll see if there's any progress because I'm going to be doing I think I'm going to be doing my propagation series and updates 
um, twice a month. So yeah, you guys will definitely um, be kept up to date on how everything's doing. Okay, so while we're waiting for those leaf cuttings to callus over, I think we're just gonna go ahead and do some watering. I know I need to water my Milano Chrysum and possibly my Silver Sword. I don't remember if I watered it the other day. We'll check. We'll check everything out and see what needs a drink. Okay, so I brought my beautiful Milano Chrysum out here because I'm pretty sure it's thirsty, but I wanna double check with the moisture meter. So I'm gonna do that first. Oh, I always feel like I'm hurting the roots. Find a good spot. Okay. So it says it's dry. So we are gonna give this guy a water, which is good because then we can drench the moss pole as well. I also just wanted to show you his newest leaf here. I swear he always has a new leaf for me to show off, but look at that. Oh my goodness, I love this plant so much. You guys already know that, but doesn't it look like it's getting more elongated? Like more of the elongated Milano Chrysum look? It does to me. Like its other leaves are very heart, very heart shaped very like mikins esque but this this looks more elongated let me know if you agree okay so so for my a little bit okay so for my plants with moss poles i find it easiest to just water them in the shower in the bathtub so i'm just going to carry him there and then we're gonna give him a soak down Okay, welcome to my shower. It is really unexciting, so I'm sorry about that, but we have him in the tub and I'm gonna turn the water on. I'm gonna have to hold him to make sure he doesn't fall over. He's very unsteady because he has such a big pole and a tiny little um, plastic pot. So yeah, let's, let's give him a, a water here. Okay, now that it's wet, it's even more unsteady, so I literally can't let go of it. There is some clumps of neem oil on the leaves that have been on there for a long time now, but I wanna see if I can kind of get off, so I'm gonna see if I can see them, and I'm just gonna rub the leaves, I guess. See if I can get those off. You can see some here. It just looks icky. I have now been heating up my neem oil with some hot water, so it hasn't been as clumpy lately, but this was from before when I was being lazy and not doing that. Okay, hopefully that got most of the little clumps. I'm gonna try to drain it as much as possible here. Okay, I'm just gonna carry it to its little spot now. Okay, so he is happily back in his home here. As you can see, he is next to that wall because like I said, he is super unstable. So, um, yeah. Just wanna make sure he's not gonna like drip on that electrical outlet. That's the last thing we need. Maybe I will move him a little bit. <laughs> I'm such a paranoid. Oh my gosh. <sighs> It's hard to do with one hand. Okay, that's not good. Just give me a sec here.
Okay, so I just moved him there. I don't think he would have dripped on that, but you guys, I'm so paranoid about weird things and like fires. I don't know if that would, I don't even know what would happen if that happened. Um, I'm just paranoid about things happening. So um, I moved him there. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, so these are the little guys we're gonna be watering. My Syngonium elbow, this little begonia cutting that has just been, you know, trying to survive over the winter. My beautiful Philodendron Gloriosum, who is putting out what looks to be a huge new leaf. So we wanna make sure that she stays well hydrated because she is putting a lot of energy into that. And then my beautiful Calathea White Star. I'm actually going to also remove this leaf because it's obviously gone yellow. And she's actually putting out a new one as well. If you can see right there, right, right here coming out. Whoops. Yeah, you get the idea. But um, this plant does look a lot better since I moved it into the greenhouse. I don't know why I was mentioning. I don't remember if it was on here on Instagram that it had put out this leaf and it came out like weird and clear at the top here and i have no idea it's obviously like crusting off now but i have no idea um what that was about um but other than that the leaves it's been putting out have been looking so healthy like look at this she i don't know if you can tell on camera but she's really healthy like her leaves are in really good condition for the most part and they're just beautiful and they're shiny because of the neem oil treatment I did uh, not long ago but yeah I love her I love her a lot I'm kind of oh, I don't know what what is going on with me I I said that I would never be like an alopecia or calathea person because um, of the fact that they attract spider mites but I want more calathea you guys I do I see really cool calathea and I'm just like I don't know, I really like them and alopecia. I want more Calathea and alopecia. I'll just say it, okay? Like, I love her, my goodness. I really want that Calathea with the really weird Calathea war should blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about. Um, those are really beautiful. I would love to have one of those. But for now, um, I have I think I have two, I have three Calathea actually. I have my medallion, my orbifolia, and this white star. Anyways, I'm totally just blabbering on now, so let's just water these plants. Oh, also I want to mention that I did fertilize not long ago, um, so I'm not worried about it right now. Um, when I'm doing like a big watering of, you know, like, 20 or more plants then i'll mix up my fertilizer water and everything but this is just kind of like a little touch up just a few plants so um that's why i'm just doing tap water when we wake hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right Sleep. 
Don't mind my dishes. They're clean. I just need to put them away. Um, so I'm just gonna cut off this yellowing leaf. Boop. Perfect. That's literally all that needed to be trimmed off, I think. That's how she's looking. Such a beauty. So now it's time to just put these all back in the cabinet. Okay, that was weird. My cabinet literally wouldn't close. Something was like going on with the magnets or something at the bottom. I had to adjust some things and I eventually got it closed. But yeah, that was a little concerning. Um, it's all good now though. I think I just wanna water a couple of begonias and then we'll probably wrap things up. So let's go see here. They actually don't need to be watered, I don't think. Maybe this one actually. Let's water this one, my Brazilian lady. It's in terracotta, so um, I can water it pretty often. However, this one, my Benigo pink, this is super heavy. It's in plastic, so it doesn't need to be watered that often. Let's go give this guy a drink. Ooh, it looks so pretty with the little rays of sun hitting it. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of water. <clears throat> This begonia is actually doing the best out of my three begonias that I got in the fall. Um, the other the other ones are the Linda Dawn and the Benigo Pink and they pretty much all got mildew, well especially the Linda Dawn, but I basically had to chop and prop all of them. Um, but this is like the part that I left in the pot. There is still a cutting of this that I have in water. But this one has fared the best out of all of them and I actually really, really like this one. And this is actually a begonia that trails down. So once it gets bigger, then it can trail down and be in like a hanging basket, which is really cool. So yeah, it's really, really cute and unique and it's fuzzy. So I like that. Oh my gosh, I almost, I just came on here to end the video and then I saw <laughs> my pile of cuttings. I totally forgot to like wrap that up. So it's been a little bit now. I don't know if it's been a, been a if it's a, I don't know if it's been a full hour, but I think it's safe to put them in some water. I'm not really too concerned about it, but let's do that. So we can kind of, you know, tie up those loose ends and then I will end the video. So just grabbing a random salsa jar that's clean obviously and I'm going to put some of the cuttings in there.
Okay, so here are our little propagation <laughs> jars. They look really cute. And I'm just gonna fill them up with just some regular water now. Okay, that is it for that, you guys. I am just gonna put them in a pretty bright spot. I'll probably put them on the desk in the plant room and then change the water like once a week. And you know, I'm sure that they will root up pretty well and I'll keep you posted. Okay, so this is where I decided to put them. So they're getting some light from the Mars Hydro and yeah, they should be happy here. Humidifier is there. We have a fan going. We're set up here. This needs some water too, actually. Maybe we'll water this guy quick and then I'll end the video. I'm so proud of this plant. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it before, but it uh, pretty much was almost completely obliterated by spider mites and I regrew it back and it's just so beautiful. I know I'm on a Calathea thing right now, aren't I? Okay, so now we are finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me and coming along and doing some plant chores. I really like making these videos because I feel really accomplished after I've filmed and I've done some plant chores. And these are just the type of videos that I generally really like to watch. So um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed. Definitely leave me a thumbs up if you did. It really helps out my channel. And also make sure you are subscribed for more planty content. And I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support my channel even further and get access to bonus content. It will all be linked down below. And oh, follow me on TikTok too. I know I'm trying to push the TikTok, but just please follow me on there if you have a TikTok. Um, I'm trying to put some planty content on there as well. So yeah, so many platforms. It's hard to keep up with, but I really appreciate your support everywhere that you support me. I love you guys so much. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.